Hi everyone, in today's video, which is a continuation of the previous video, we are going to go through the two remaining examples of regex, which may have real life applications. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back and let's get started with our first example. Now, in my first example, we are going to extract dates and price movements of a stock from a financial website. And that financial website is going to be this one here, investing.com. So let me launch my Chrome and go to that website to show you how it looks like. And the stock I'm going to get the price movements of will be apple apple inc right so here we have the dates on the left hand side in this table and then the price movements on the right hand side and i'm going to go and grab just these values from this website but be mindful that with these websites they have policies that talk about how you can web crawl from their websites or not and if you want to see the policies you can go to uh, the main page of the website and type in robots.txt which is going to give you the rules on what you can crawl and what you can't crawl in today's video this is just for demo so i'm just going to go ahead and do it but i advise you if you are doing web crawling uh, follow the rules of the website if possible so now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go url download to file this website this apple computer inc historical data so that goes in there and then i'm gonna download this into a scripter temp txt so that is going to be saved into this folder here which is where the script that you see in the visual studio code is saved in and then what i am going to do is i'm going to read the file into a output variable called string and the file that i'm going to read is this one and so if i see what i get from the results is if i go ahead and run it i should be able to see the html page downloaded into my text file like that All right so this is basically this page view source that one here all right okay so i'll just go back put that back in now i can comment this out because i have the temp.txt file saved in here if i change this to html and bring over my chrome and then drag and drop this into my chrome window this is the downloaded HTML web page and it's got all the data that I want. So this is good enough. So let me get out and change it back to text. Move it out. All right, so we're good. Let me just move this and go. I'm going to create a array, initialize an array called dates. And I'm going to put all the dates in here first. And like I did last time, I'm going to use the while loop where I'm going to put in the found post. If bound post does not equal starting post, I'm gonna keep running this while loop and I'm going to have to initialize starting position to one. And within my while loop, I'm going to do my regex match and put in the string. And I have to create the pattern. And this pattern is something that I am going to have to find out by looking at this temp txt file so somewhere in here is going to be the value that i want so let me examine this using the the actual html page and what i need to look for is this bit here where this is the table if you're familiar with html code then you should be able to get this really quickly so july 15 2021 is going to be just a random string that i'm going to search to find this table and i've got the result here where i have uh 16th of july and then the percentage movement 15th of july and then the percentage movement so this appears to be the right one and this will be 
the start of the table and then the table head so let me just quickly show you uh, so this is the beginning of this of this table right so this point this is the beginning of the table and that's gonna be up here and then you have the table headers which is represented by this tag here and then the table row which contains the table header data right and the first value you see here is date and then the price you see is down here open is open so on and so forth until you see the percentage change so these are the table header values and what we want to find out is the table rows and the data that are embedded within the table rows so here we have the table body which will contain the table rows, which will have table data, which has these values that we want. But what we just need is, uh, is just this pattern, right? So what I'm gonna do in my code is just grab that and then uh, form my regex pattern using this pattern we see here, or using this text data we see here so that's gonna be not too difficult because all I need to do is find this bit grab that as my sub pattern oops find this grab this as my sub pattern and then find that to mark the end of my regex pattern so let me go ahead and create that and so I'm gonna do class equals and then what follows after is the quotation mark. And in our auto hockey script, we need to provide double, uh, twice as many as double quotation mark in order to escape the double quote. And I'll go first, left bold, no wrap, and then another set of double, another set of two double quotation marks, and then close angle bracket. And then afterwards, here is the date that I'm going to capture. And so I want to capture this as a sub pattern. So I'll put it in parentheses and wildcard star sign and then question mark to make this search ungreedy slash lazy. And then finally we have the open angle bracket forward slash T D, which represents the closure of the table data tag and then the close angle bracket. So this should be good enough. And I will export this result into output bar and put in the starting position to mark the start of my regex match search. And then I'm going to put the result of this into my found pause. And then I'm going to push the result out into my dates array. So dates.push will put the output bar one, which is a sub pattern, which is going to be this, which is going to represent the date into my array. And then I'm going to update my starting position to found pass plus strn output var to update uh, the position of my next regex match to the end of this string or end of this line within my text file or the string variable. And so this should be good enough. So what I can do to observe the result is maybe do a loop and dates and length of dates. So this is gonna loop through all the elements within my, uh, within my array. And then I can create a variable called message and append to it the dates, a index and a new line to see what result I get at the end as my message. So let me go ahead and run this. Then I should get all the dates and these dates should be the same as all the dates that we see on the left hand side. So it starts with July 16th and then it ends with June 17th. So I've got all the dates and I've got additional line breaks, which I don't need. So you can either use the R trim uh, at the end here message I can I can probably put the just go R trim message and 
line breaks to remove the all the unnecessary line breaks so I don't see any more line breaks here so if I paste it out I don't see additional line breaks being added at the end or alternatively you can go if reg x match output bar one word character then push it out so what this does is if the output bar one does not have any of the match for a word character so letters numbers and etc then do not push it into my date array so this is going to only push out values that have at least one um, word character in it and so if I remove this actually clipboard equals message then I should be able to get a similar result maybe I'll have an additional line break at the end yes I do get an additional line break at the end and that's because of my dates length loop which adds a line break at the end of each iteration of the loop um, so you can use the art trim or you can use this one if you're okay with uh, the, the final uh, line break at the end so that is good enough for my dates so let me just comment this bit out and what I then have to do is I will have to get the percentage price movement so I'll repeat what I did before and this time I will put in percentage price movement as my new array and starting position will be set back to one and I will also have to reset my found pass to uh, I call it zero zero or one it doesn't really matter I think um, but we need that because this variable is used up here so by the end of this loop we will have a found pass that is some number greater than uh, what we want it to be and so all of these are okay and I just have to update this bit to capture the percentage price movement so if I bring up the search box and search for June 16 2021 I should be able to find the table data here we go so that is this is what we want so these percentage points are what we want and so let me just grab some of this and for my regex pattern and so here i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to put in the class equals i'm looking at this bit here right so i'm going to put in two of double quotes and then bold red font double quotes and then close angle bracket and parentheses to capture the value inside these angle brackets as my sub pattern and then close angle open angle bracket to close out my table data tag and uh, notice how this is red font but the one afterwards is green font and that's because sometimes you have price moving up and move price moving down right so when the price moves down you get a red font a class assigned to the element when the price moves up then you get green font assigned to the element and so that has to be converted into a wildcard so red is not good enough because you could get green as well and because you can't just simply put red or green inside a group what you instead have to use is a word character and then put a plus to match as many word characters as possible until you hit the word font now you could have for example uh, when the price doesn't move at all you could if this is a zero percentage then maybe this is going to be black and so using a wild card like this is much better than just doing a red or green right so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in and so this should be good enough so let me just get out of this and then I think I just gotta update this array into percentage price movement and I should be good so let me check this out as well the result 
paste that in, paste that in, and then if I run it, I should be able to get the percentage price movements. Let me just do a quick sanity check, and here we go. So I've got negative uh, 1.41 and then 1.26, marking the end of the price movements. And so finally, I'm going to combine these two into one string so I can maybe paste the result out into Excel. So let me just run Excel and then let me just put it on the side so I can later when I paste my result back out into my clipboard I can have on column A the dates and column B the price movements. Alright so let's go ahead and do that and the way we're going to do that is in the beginning of this line where I append the value into the message variable I'm going to add dates index and then a tab because in Excel you need to separate the data out by tabs in order to put the data into different columns and then percentage price movement a index and line break will be good enough and let's see if there's anything that I haven't done I think that's that's good enough so if I go ahead and run it then I'll see the dates and then the percentage price movements afterwards so if I go ahead and press paste it then I get exactly what I wanted into my Excel spreadsheet like that okay so that's it for the first example and moving on to the next example I have some string that contains hyphen concatenated inventory list and I'm going to pass this using match object so here's my string that has some values inside the string so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert each of these lines into something a little bit more easier to see so I'm going to say for example um, let's call this category ID so I'm going to call it category ID and that and call this a category and call this one oh no this number uh, item ID whoops and then this value here item description and then the last one call it quantity so I'm gonna have this data output in this manner which is a little more organized than how it is right now so I'm going to run a loop pass and I'm going to pass the string variable this variable and then I'm going to pass this by line break and then put in the curly braces and I'm going to do a regex match and do a loop field because we're in a loop um, each of these lines will be considered a loop field and I'm going to put in my regex pattern which is going to start with my object prefix because I'm going to convert this into an object and then as you can see here we have hyphens so we can utilize these hyphens as a separator and there are how many patterns are there one two three four five patterns or sub patterns so I'm going to create two three four five sub patterns and then put in hyphens to separate them out as it is the case in our string and then name these sub patterns by going question mark and open angle bracket close angle bracket and I'll put all of this into my sub patterns and then put the names inside the angle brackets to give these a name so my first one is going to be category ID and then the next one is going to be category third one is going to be item ID and then the fourth one will be item description and then the last one will be quantity now I still have to capture these patterns and so how I'm gonna do that is put that in by using a wildcard and star sign 
to capture everything that occurs up until the next hyphen that occurs. And then I'm going to do the same here. And then the same here. And then the same here. And then finally, in my last sub pattern as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to initialize my variable called message to display the output out later and then append to message subpad value zero. What value zero means is the entire match, not a particular sub pattern, but the entire regex match. And then afterwards I'll put in two new lines to separate them out from um, each of the sub patterns, which I'm going to collect now using a loop subpad count and I'm doing a count to loop through all these sub patterns by the number of sub patterns and then within each iteration of the loop I'm going to append to the message variable subpad dot name a index which represents the the nth iteration of the loop so the first iteration will have an a index of one and so subpad name one will have this being displayed and then I'll append to it a colon followed by a space and then subpad value one or a index and then append to it a new line break so when this loop finishes we'll gather all the category IDs and then the value that comes after that for all of these strings separated by a line break. So if I go ahead and show this message box, not outside, but inside the loop pass, which is going to show how many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten message boxes consecutively. So if I go ahead and run it, I get nothing back. So there's definitely something wrong with it. And so if I have a look at what would be the problem, the problem is that I have forgot to put in my subpad as my output variable name. So if I go ahead and run it now, here we go. So initially in my first message box, I get this string printed out in my first line, which is this one. And then afterwards, I have appended to the message box the category ID the category ID value, category, category value, item ID, item ID value, and etc. etc. until the end. So this is output in a manner that's slightly easier to read than what you see in this string. So if I go ahead and press OK and I'll see the next line appearing and then so on and so forth like that. Right, so let's say I want to assign to my clipboard this message box or instead let's say if you have in Excel let me just bring up Excel again and let's say you have these values added into Excel so you you, you pulled out this data from a database and that was in the format of an Excel spreadsheet let me just remove the formatting I don't want to see the colors so let's say this is how the Excel data has been pulled out from your database you would usually have these data separated into different columns so let me just do that as well by using delimited of hyphen and so you're gonna get data like that right so let me just copy that and then paste into my string here you can pass this and display this data into the manner that we have seen before and because the hyphen is replaced by tabs here all you got to do is put in the tab for regex pattern replacing the hyphen and then we are going to see the same result so if I go ahead and run it I will see the same result obviously the first line because you have this separation or delimiting by the tab you're going to see the tabs but in the next ones you will see the data sorted out in a nice manner like that
Alright, so this is it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.